Professor Witzman, um, climate science is pervaded by uncertainty. Uncertainty on climate sensitivity, uh, on climate change physical impacts, on the capacity of socioeconomic and physical systems to adapt, and also on the capacity to innovate. Do you believe that climate science has the instruments to deal with these multifaceted dimensions of uncertainty? Uh, I can only uh, give as an answer an impression. So <laughs> one more feature of all the uncertainty is that I'm uncertain about how to answer such questions. So uh, deep does the uncertainty go. Uh, uh, we learn more and more about the science uh, as time goes on, but in climate change science, so far for the last 20 or 30 years or so, there seems to be a curious situation where uh, the more we understand, the more we understand what we don't understand. So that uh, so far, the overall level of, of uncertainty about what might be the consequences has not been reduced. It, it has not acted like the standard model of science where there's some truth out there and we converge to the truth as time goes on by finding out more and more things. Now maybe that will happen in the future, but so far resolution of some uncertainties has seemed to result in other uncertainties so that the overall level of uncertainty overall about what might happen uh, for, from various human actions seems unfortunately to remain about the same. So the uncertainty remains a central feature and it's hard to argue that that will go away anytime soon but by soon here, I mean the next few decades or so. Mm -hmm. And focusing on economics, what are the most critical dimensions of uncertainty in the economics of climate change? And also what are the instruments available uh, in the field of economics to deal with this sort of uncertainty? Well, the uncertainty is very vast about how bad this might be Get. So we're dealing with a fundamental situation where we can't put an upper bound on how bad things could, might get uh, because uh, all of our eggs are in one basket with this problem. Uh, it, is, it affects the whole earth and there's no way to put a bound on how bad it might get. So what we're faced with is a situation where the probabilities of really bad things happening are declining as uh, uh, the badness of the situation gets worse. But we don't know really how fast the, the uh, badness or the damages are declining relative to the probabilities. So we're talking about very small probabilities of catastrophic things. As we increase the size of the catastrophic thing, its probability goes down, but we're not sure by how much it goes down. And some very crude numbers seem to suggest, or could be interpreted as suggesting, that uh, this is a serious aspect of the problem. Uh, it's not there in most other economic situations. When we build a bridge, uh, the worst that could happen, God forbid, is maybe that a few hundred people die. Here there really is no limit, so this is unique, this climate change. The instruments to use, uh, how to address this uncertainty, well, maybe put more emphasis on studying extreme events rather than uh, what is most likely to happen. Um, maybe being aware that some of the so-called solutions 
are also also have this property that with a low probability something very bad might occur uh, perhaps carbon capture and sequestration has th this aspect, this worrisome aspect to it that if something went wrong with this approach and so much carbon dioxide is buried underground and it gets released relatively rapidly, that could be a catastrophe with a low probability. So try to be aware of the nature of the solutions that they're not increasing this aspect of a small probability high impact uh, catastrophe. Um, maybe we, we need, uh, in my opinion, to do contingency planning. So it's not just that uh, there's some general plan or some conference to deal uh, with uh, cutting back carbon emissions and so forth, but that we somehow start planning for worst case scenarios. We define what it would be to see the early sign of a worst case scenario, and we outline certain emergency plans uh, for how we would deal with it. Um, it's a very difficult situation. It always we have. This is not the only situation of its sort. It's the only, it's one of the only situations having this broader scope. But it's these are situations where there might be some very ba very bad outcomes with low or very low probabilities, and we have difficulty quantifying them. Um, that's about the best I can do. Yes, that's very good. Uh, but then um, thinking about uh, the worst case scenarios and uh, the probability of very serious catastrophic events, do you think that a better understanding uh, of these worst case scenarios would change the balance between mitigation and adaptation policy responses? Well, we know the direction in general that uh, the possibility of a catastrophe uh, is going to go. We know that if you disregard the catastrophe aspect and you come up with a certain recommendation that when you have in mind the catastrophe aspect in addition it will make the measures more strict to prevent climate change or to mitigate it. Um, I guess that when there's the possibility of a catastrophe since it's harder to adapt to catastrophes, it probably does shift the balance more toward uh, climate change mitigation than toward adaptation. And given this very complex picture and this very pervasive dimension of uncertainty, how do you think that uh, climate science should talk to policy uh, to address this challenge? Well, I think they're doing the best they can. They're trying to lay out uh, various scenarios. Uh, the latest thinking is embodied already in the fourth IPCC report, and what will be emphasized even more in the fifth is to try to make more explicit some of these probabilities, even though it's very difficult. So... Um, I, Science has to face the fact that we don't know what these probabilities are. We don't know the outcomes. The best we can know is probabilities of outcome. And that is both difficult to, for scientists to quantify, it's difficult to communicate to the public, and it's very difficult for the public to understand People are not used to thinking in terms of probabilities. They want to know, will this happen or won't it happen? Should I do this or should I do that? Uh, when you have uncertainty at the core, and it is at the core of this, you cannot give an answer, will it happen or won't it happen? It will happen with a certain probability is the best you can say. So this is the situation we are in. We are stuck with this uh, uh, high degree of uncertainty. And I don't see what scientists can do anymore except to be honest about it. Um, uh, 
there is increasing scientific recognition I think to the point that almost every climate scientist recognizes it, that the uncertainty is at the core of this. We are unsure about all of these projections that are being made. Extreme, extremely bad outcomes are possible. They have a low probability, and the whole discussion somehow needs to, set, needs to focus more on... Uh, what are the probabilities and what are the outcomes and how might the outcomes be altered by certain actions? And that is a very difficult discussion because even those parts are uncertain, even the probabilities are uncertain and the outcomes are uncertain. So I can't offer a guideline uh, here that's more accurate. I can't say that more research, and I don't think anybody can say that more research will uncover a precise answer to what is the probability of something like a catastrophe of this sort. Uh, we are simply stuck with this situation, and we have to make decisions in the face of it. And given these premises, my last question, a very banal one, uh, what is your view on the future of international climate agreements? Is it a skeptical view or can you be optimistic? Uh, uh, also in the light of what we are discussing today, CDR potential and renewables, the latest IPCC report, special report. I, I think my own philosophy would be to uh, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. I th the realistic side of me says that very little will actually be done until the average person can feel this in their lives or see it around them. Uh, so far, climate change is this difficult abstraction that will happen sometime in the future. People aren't seeing anything much right now. And so it is not impacting the lives of the average person or the average family at all, really. Um, and it's just difficult to convince people to do things that are not impacting their lives now or in the near future when there are things out there that are adversely affecting their lives now and in the near future, like economic conditions and so forth. This is a great difficulty with t climate change because of the time scales. It's extremely um, difficult for the average person to relate to this. Um, so I'm afraid I'm pessimistic in the sense that I don't think much will be done until and unless this be, uh, climate change becomes more concrete, more specific, more visible, has more of an impact on the average person, only then, I fear, will really specific measures be taken. Of course, it may be too late by then, maybe, uh, and that is uh, one more of the central dilemmas in this area. Thank you, Professor Weizmann. You're more than welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>